this, this compensator right here, guys, this is the thing that turns the pump on and off uh, when we have a demand for more flow, okay? So first off, when this pump is turning, um, initially there's no pressure when we first fire up and as soon as there is pressure the pump is going to turn off it's going to push this little servo piston out to flatten out this wash plate and turn itself off okay um, the way that it does that is it sends a pressure signal up to one of these compensator spools here to direct oil flow around to the uh, servo piston to shut off so when we first fire up um, the output pressure uh, goes up to all the valve stacks. Given that this is going to be used on a closed center system, that means everything's deadheaded, right? So as soon as that pressure starts to build up, uh, this pump here is basically going to turn itself off. Tomorrow when we take a closer look at the schematics, uh, it'll make a little bit more sense. But down here we have um, a load sense spool and we have a pressure compensator spool, okay? And the, uh, the pressure compensator, this is the one that'll shut the pump off at peak pressure. Uh, your load sense spool is the one that'll shut the pump off um, when we've satisfied the demands of the system, okay? So, uh, first off, we've got a port that comes up over here, okay? And this port comes from your pump output pressure. So whatever your pump output pressure is, it comes up here and it actually pushes on the ends of both of the spools. Okay? Uh, when it pushes on the end of the little spool here, it's only got to overcome um, typically a couple of hundred pounds of force. Okay? When it comes up and pushes on this one, it's going to have to overcome several thousand pounds of force. Okay? And that's representative of the surface area on the end of the spool versus whatever the spring tension is. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what we're going to do here, guys, is let's say that uh, my low pressure standby, and these are some terms we may not be totally familiar with yet, but we will be after tomorrow. Um, so the low pressure standby, uh, let's say that uh, my target was 350 PSI, okay? So that means that the pump output pressure is going to start climbing as soon as it's running. And once we hit 350 PSI of pump output pressure against all of those dead-ended closed center valves, uh, that 350 PSI starts building up and it actually shifts this valve over. I'm going to back this out so that I can show it to you in the shifted position. Okay. So when this shifts over, it actually opens up a flow path. Okay. So I'm going to set it right there. And you can see the flow path from the pump output across here. And now this, this valve um, uh, land right here is cleared. And we're going to direct that oil flow down here and it's going to fill up and it's going to push that servo piston out so that we can destroke the pump. Okay, so you see that? And then <coughs> with our pump destroked, uh, basically all we have to do is have just enough flow to maintain 350 psi over here, which should be next to nothing. Okay, so we can get this back in here. Okay, now what we have over here, guys, is um, a load sense line. Okay, we're going to talk about the load sense shuttle network. Um, tomorrow when we look at how this, this pump works, but uh, what we do here is we put um, work port pressure from one of the functions to this port right here. So uh, if one of my functions needs, let's say a thousand PSI of oil pressure in order to lift the load, what we do is we grab a thousand PSI uh, oil pressure signal from the work port and we send it down the load sense line to this area right here. Okay. Now I've got 1,000 PSI of load sense oil pressure here, and I've got 350 PSI of spring force. Do you see how I got there? Yeah. Okay, so now I need 1,350 PSI in order to be able to shift this spool over and shut the pump off. We all get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, so if I got 1,000 PSI of oil pressure and 350 PSI of spring force, but meanwhile my pump output was only 350, guess what happens, guys? The spool shifts back over this way. Okay. When the spool shifts over this way, the oil flow, it's blocked, so pump output can't come in here. It also can't come in here because that one's blocked too. So it comes up here, up here. It's going to come across right here and down, Okay, and it takes a little jog sideways and comes down through here. When it gets over here, we're just in our pump housing. This is K-strain, so that right there is the flow path to drain the servo piston. Okay, so uh, from here up across, down, across, down, like that, okay? Um, once we build up to 1,350 PSI, just imagine this for a sec, this pump is just going to turn on, right? And let's say that uh, the pump output flow is way more than necessary for that function that needed 1,000 PSI, okay? Let's say the pump is putting out twice as much flow as what that function needs. What do you think is going to happen to the pressure? 
build up. I'm kicking more flow through than what my function needs. That, mean my, that means my pressure is going to start building, right? And if my pressure starts to build anything beyond 1,350 psi, which is as much pressure it takes to satisfy the, the, the flow requirements of that function, uh, that pressure is going to build, and this spool is going to shift over again, and we're going to start destroking the pump. And then what we're going to do is this spool here is going to be sitting there modulating back and forth. So the pump outputs 1,350 psi, which is only 350 psi more than what's necessary for that function to operate. Okay, so we put a little bit more uh, pressure out, but uh, we're running very efficiently that way. That's a lot smarter than having the pump running at uh, 4,000 psi all the time. Okay, now let's imagine that 1,000 psi load was a cylinder, and that cylinder is dead ended now. What happens to the pressure, guys? Is it going to go down or is it going to start skyrocketing? It's going back up. Okay, so as that cylinder dead ends, then my pump output pressure is going to start to rise, but my pump output pressure, that's now feeding through to the work port, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that work port pressure is coming back here, so this is going to start going up. Whatever the pump output is, this is always going to try and demand the system go to 350 more. Okay, so this could just kind of spiral out of control and blow the system up, right? So rather than have that happen, we have a second spool here that can override. Okay, and this is our pressure compensator, and this is what uh, performs the pump cutout function. Okay, and what that is, is once we reach, um, let's say 3,000 PSI as a maximum system pressure, the pressure on the pump outlet here is coming and pushing on this side, okay? 3,000 PSI, but guess what? This side here is 3,000 plus 350, so we're at 3,350 on the load sense. It's never going to shut off. So we come up here, and I've got 3,000 pounds of tension on that spring. Well, this one, I can actually shift that over, okay? And I'm going to move this one back so we can see that happen. Okay? So now when I shift that spool over, it took 3,000 pounds of oil pressure to shift it over. Now the pump output is going to come up through here, across here, and straight down to destroke. Okay? And it's going to destroke at high pressure, not a lower pressure this time. So that's how you hit your maximum pump output, okay? Um, this pressure right here is determined by whatever the spring <coughs> is, okay? The pressure that it takes to make, to, to make this spool move, that's determined by whatever um, your load sense pressure is plus whatever that spring force was over there, okay? Uh, we're going to take a look at a schematic and uh, we're going to correlate that to what we've seen here on this, uh, on this cutaway. But you know what guys, it's, it's not as complicated as it seems. This is your first crack at looking at this, so don't get too worried if it doesn't make perfect sense yet. Uh, we've got a schematic we'll look at tomorrow. Um, we'll go through there, we'll identify all of these ports on the schematic. We'll come back down here again tomorrow and we'll take another look at this, okay? So do we got any questions guys?